Hi, hey, hello everyone. Today I'm just going to dump a whole lot of information on you and just call it a tips and tricks video. It's, it's easy work. I've personally hit adventure rank 31 recently. I've finished a story, I've found all the animoculus and geoculuses, and uh, all that's left to do is like collect books and go cooking and stuff. And I would probably call this the soft cap. So uh, now that my addiction is over and I am a recovering heroin addict. So let me just start off the video with a fun fact. Both regions, Mondstadt and Liyue, they both have an extra animoculus. So to level the Statue of the Seven to uh, level 10, I think you need like 66 and 132 or something, something like that um, of those geoculuses and animoculus. And there is actually one extra for both of them. And if you don't believe me, there you go. One extra animoculus, but this is max. So just agonize over that fact for a bit, uh, or be happy that you actually completely finished it. Anyway, I wanted to share a few things that I've learned along the way. It's probably gonna end up being like a lot more than 50 tips or whatever, but let's keep a counter. First of all, ignore tier lists, learn about your characters and prioritize elemental reactions. This was actually going to be my last point, but I think it's the most important. So I'm gonna talk about it first. You can't control the hand that RNG Jesus gave you, so you just got to play with the hand that you're dealt. For now, just build a team around the elemental reactions, and this includes the items like the artifacts, the skill effects, the uh, item effects, so you, this, I hope this helps you choose those. So in my opinion, and this is an opinion, I think that the best elemental reactions for DPS is it's always going to involve Electro. I think in particular Pyro and Electro, which creates an overload effect, is the strongest. This kind of explains why there is so much craze around like Shangling and uh, Fischl and Diluc uh, and why teams are like really based around them. Right now it's a real range of meta. Uh, Fischl is like, I think, I personally think Fischl is king for single target DPS. Another one you could also think about is Cryo plus Electro, which creates the superconduct effect. Superconduct deals AoE damage and lowers the enemy's defense. So what this means is that you would follow up with a strong physical damage unit. Also, if you have Venti, you can kind of just ignore everything because Venti pretty much summons like a, a recipe for a mini calamity and then you can just throw a whole bunch of shit in and it's like you're adding ingredients into a hellfire and boom, you've created 2020. So you also have to think about elemental resonance which is this screen right here. So depending on which two elements you're running, you can have some awesome effects. So Cryo, for example, gives you an extra increase in 25% attack to your entire party. Uh, wind, uh, blah, 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 blah. I love running wind, especially for exploration because it gives you the, it gives you the increased move speed as well as the stamina consumption, which really helps you when you're running and you're climbing walls. So for example, if you were running electro, you would see affected by, uh, okay, it doesn't matter, but superconduct overloaded and electro charged, uh, have a hundred percent chance to generate an electro elemental particle. That's means that you're getting out your skills uh, more often which means that you're getting higher dps right because a lot of the damage is coming from skills so whilst personally i'm running two anima and two pyro this is just the hand i've been dealt right i'm getting that sweet move speed that sweet attack bonus but but the problem is i can't deal with those fire abyss mages like and their fire shield i don't have a water character so you know i'm running the comp that i know it's just that I also need to know the weaknesses of it and how to fill in those weaknesses. Ideally, most people run two one one comps because two to get some sick bonus effect like the Electro or the Pyro, right? And the one and one to make sure that you have elemental coverage so that you can deal with whatever you come across. At the end of the day, how you utilize the elements, especially elemental resonance and reactions, I reckon reactions is so important. That will dictate your progress rather than agonizing over tier lists. Upgrade your three and four star artifacts and weapons actually for massive gains into stats. That's tip two. Because the attack stat is just so low in this game, for, okay, he's, okay, his attack is a bit high, 702, but let's have a look at Gene. Look, 509 attack, 50% of that is, wait, that's 250, that's a lot. So early, maybe into mid game, flat attack is gonna be way more impactful on your characters. And the reason is because if you have a look at the artifacts and if you have a look at the feathers, which give you attack, you could actually juice out one of these feathers. And I think plus 16 four star feather 
will have 232 attack. I haven't done it because I'm actually clearing content fine for now, but uh, when I do hit that cap, that wall, I'm going to be making sure that the DPS on my team are going to get the, that extra 232 attack. Whilst I haven't maxed a feather, you can have a look at my, my crown of the brave, which has 23.2% crit rate. Like, that's pretty big. And whilst you upgrade to plus 16, you also hit like stat, sub stats like this, like plus 16.8 crit damage, like shit. And this Berserker's timepiece I've got, it's plus 34.8% attack with these pretty sick subsets. Like you're missing out on a lot of substats if you're not upgrading your artifacts and being stingy about it. The main thing I want to say here is that you do not need to hoard your artifacts. To upgrade your artifacts, you need to feed them. You need to feed them into each other, right? For now, I've been saving the three, four, and five stars for all of them. But I think that in the very near future, I will probably start in feeding the three stars into the four stars. Also, if you do find an exceptionally good artifact and you don't have the exp materials and you do have like a shitty artifact sitting around. You can feed it into it at a, I think maybe at a 10, 15% EXP loss. So it's a lot of it is still transferable. It's not like you've lost all of that EXP. It's not wasted. There is a slight inefficiency, but but upgrading your artifacts is going to let you clear higher content. It's going to let you hit the higher AR ranks, and you're going to be able to clear things faster so that you can get there faster to start farming. But before feeding an artifact into another, especially a plus 16 one, I'd probably look at putting it on another character first, especially because you're going to be needing eight characters for Abyss, two teams of four, right? Your adventure rank daily commission scales, but it is based on the AR of the day. So what this means is that if your adventure rank 19 so you'd fall into this category and you see that you're getting slightly more rewards uh, if you hit the next tier so which is between 20 to 24 honestly don't sweat it like that is almost nothing that is almost nothing as well and the most important thing is that you're not getting more adventure exp here here to here yeah okay think about it but only if you're close don't even sweat it it's like 25 that's like one chest but what i also want to add to that is that if you start the day on Adventure Rank 19 and you hit Adventure Rank 20 and then you hand it in, you will still get the rewards for Adventure Rank 19. So if you do want the next tier of rewards, you need to start the day on Adventure Rank 20. Using foods to supplement your dog shit RNG. The best offensive food I found is the Adeptus Temptation, which you can get by completing the Qingyun Peak Challenge. For this challenge, in a nutshell, you get three cranes to point to a mountain. Uh, to avoid spoiling anything for you. The materials to cook this food is uh, ham, crab, shrimp, and matsutake. So the shrimp you can actually buy from a general store in the Yue. Uh, it's Dongshen. Let's have a look. And it's right here. I've just bought it out. You can buy 100 per day. Ham is just from hunting meat and processing it with salt, as you can see here, which leaves the matsutake and the crab. These two are probably the most sought after ingredients and probably going to be your limiting factors. However, what you can do is you can you can actually go to Liyue Harbor and there are two NPCs. So Uncle Sun sells a bunch of seafood, which is fish, crab, and shrimp meat. Pretty sure it's 10 each and it refreshes, uh, I'm quite sure it's daily. Then you have this fishmonger Uncle Gao over this side and he sells fish and fish. So to show you guys on the minimap, that's just right here. Otherwise, my advice would just be to hop onto the Genshin Impact interactive map and toggle on the toggle on the resources that you require. Uh, however, I've found that I found that okay, well, it's not on the map here, but there is a island here that is part of a quest line, and there are maybe like ten to twelve crabs per day that you can get from there. On top of that, you've got over here Falcon Coast, and just and just running along the shoreline, there is a whole bunch of crabs and even some more in this area here. Matsutake, it's everywhere and it's quite scarce. So that's probably going to be your limiting factor. Silly me, I didn't even introduce the food. So if you actually hit the perfect on the food, you'll get 372 attack damage and 12% crit rate for 300 seconds. My Jean only has 500 attack, so that's actually almost double her attack, which is bloody crazy. So I've just popped them whenever I needed a little bit of extra help because uh, my team my team at one point was really dog shit until I got a couple of lucky rolls. Also remember that you can actually stack a defense and offensive buff together. So for example, you can use the Adeptus Temptation and the Fisherman's Toast 
together. However, you cannot stack two offensive buffs, so you can't stack this one, uh, which gives attack, and you can't stack that with you can't stack that with one that gives physical damage, for example, or crit rate, wherever that is. <laughs> so don't be afraid to use your foods because all of it is recraftable if you're a hoarder like me. And also remember to read the descriptions. Some of them are actually heal over times. Some of them are actually um, some of them are actually revives. And I think there were a couple that actually healed everyone in the party and I didn't notice and I just wasted it. <laughs> Remember to upgrade your weapons to supplement your dog shit RNG. Remember to upgrade your weapons. Yeah, they may be dog shit, but the base and the substat increases are just too good to pass up on. For example, I have a Skyrider's Greatsword. So clean, it's actually 39 base attack and 9.6% physical damage bonus. However, when I've juiced it out, this bad boy is level 40, 169 attack, 24.6. Now, if you think back to that artifact, that feather artifact, which gives 232 attack, you realize that feathers are better than swords. So get on those feathers, guys. Also, the investment into a level 40 weapon is quite low. You can probably run like one dungeon and you'll have enough materials to upgrade a weapon. Also, if you have any duplicates of weapons, so you can see here, this is an attack increase by blue text 10% and this bad boy is only 6%. So this is because I've smashed four other copies into itself through this refinement process, and this actually increases the scaling on the blue numbers. So with your prototypes, which are the four star crafting weapon materials, for mid game, create at least one of each weapon type so that you can experiment rather than making duplicates for refinement. This was a mistake I made personally. I was still using the prototype rancor, and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go all in on this bad boy. And so I just made like, another dupe but then i realized that maybe the iron sting is actually better especially for who i'm going to be using it on so this one emphasizes the elemental damage and this one emphasizes physical damage the refinement only gave me like an extra one percent on here which i'm sure is good and is making some sort of impact but but i think that the flexibility that having the iron sting would have been better also the iron sting looks really cool obviously by end game you're gonna have r5s of all of these craftable weapons so it doesn't really matter but for now you just need to pick and choose a little bit send your dog shit characters to expeditions wow i've got a bug where i can cook from anywhere what is going on so for me, that's rocks. For, rocks for the most part are used for weapon crafting. Analyze what you need. I'm missing predominantly these crystal chunks. So I'm gonna be sending all of my characters to these guys. However, I've also sent one to farm Lotus and Matsutake because I want to max out cooking because I'm a completionist like that. In the short run, it's gonna look like it doesn't really make a difference, but it all adds up, right? If you're not gonna use the characters anyway, you might as well just have them serve some purpose. For me, I have a long-term goal of trying to get Refine 5 on all the 4-star crafter weapons, so I'm going to be sending all of my characters to the mines. <laughs> this is just like Arknights. <laughs> As for the ore materials, I would really advise against using these to create those upgrade materials, simply because the ratios just make it not really worth it. So you're going to need like 3 or 5 or some ridiculous amount of crystal chunks to make those upgrade stones. And for upgrading weapons, don't forget to fodder your 1 and 2-star weapons, because you're never gonna use them. They're dog shit. They don't even have a skill. Find small inclines to do plunge attacks. So I don't know if you've seen the ratios, but the greatsword plunge attack is actually pretty ridiculous, depending on how high down you're coming from. As you become more aware of the game and get more used to it, you'll notice like slight inclines, right? So I can actually do a jump attack right here because there is a smallest ever so slight incline. Uh, obviously I can't do it the way up, but I can go down like that. And I personally think it's an increase to DPS, especially if you're using physical damage, but to each their own, right? So it's just like, boom. And it's just so satisfying. And if you guys still don't know the plunge damage glitch, it's like you go down and then you character switch and then you go back up and then you character switch and then you go back up and then you character switch and then you go back up and then you character switch, and then you character switch. <gasps> oh, blah, 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 into perpetuity, right? Uh, depending on your ping and your lag, you ha might have varying success. If your damage is still dog shit, don't forget to upgrade your talents. Skills, aka talents in this game, are upgradable past your character's second ascension. They provide a buff across the board in terms of ratios. So if I click this one, it's pretty much every number gets a boost. I don't think you actually ever get like a new effect or anything, but these are still sizable bonuses. So all in all, it's a straight numbers buff. Over time, these extra levels are definitely gonna be useful. The materials for these upgrades are quite easy to farm. You can just click them and you can click the source and it will actually lead you there. Okay, well, yep, like that. And it will show you what the daily drop is there. 
So again, you have to use resin to farm this, but but I think that this is probably one, going to be one of the more grindy ones. And if you can't do the domain on your own, you can actually go and co-op with somebody else. So there's actually a start matching button right here. And I've had a fair bit of success. I came across the Venti, he sucked them, I screwed them. Invest into about two or three of your favorite or strongest characters. During early game, you're going to be throwing around upgrade materials like it's nobody's business. Just know that by about the third or fourth character extension, you're going to start being starved in mats. So just try to be a little bit more wise in who you want to invest into. Uh, uh, so I'm talking about EXP books, weapon EXP materials, talent upgrades, ascension upgrades. By mid late game, you're gonna be heavily investing into maybe three or four characters. And the ones that you're investing to are gonna be your main damage dealers, carries, uh, DPS, whatever you want to call them. It's probably going to be about three or four characters, two for each Abyss team, with the rest of your team acting as enablers and supports. And funneling all your resources into these three or four or two units is going to get you a lot more value than spreading your resources out. Because if you're only going to spend like two seconds with Gene on the field, for example, then it's not really worth having a fully juiced out Gene as opposed to a fully juiced out Diluc who you're gonna spend most of your time in. Elite bosses have a 100% chance of dropping upgrade materials. Every day you're guaranteed at least four of the four elites. So I'm talking these four guys here. So you can just get into this book by hitting F1. I think it's called your adventurer's handbook and you just get to come to the bosses. And you can actually click the navigate button, which you can't hear now because I've done them all. And it will show you the locate it will show you the location of four of each of these guys. These are just like the preset ones uh, that the game recognizes, but and there are actually a lot more in the open world. Of course, there's not just four golems. I was farming them every day, but I just got tired of it and I wasn't using most of the mats, especially like the golem cores and the dead day line and the dead ley line tree branch stick. Don't worry about it. Like, just know it's there. If you do need like mats ASAP, go for those. If you're lacking full star artifacts, don't forget to unlock the Shrine of Depths. So you can go to the interactive map for the 10 shrine locations, but uh, there are 10 per region uh, in Mondstadt and the UAE. For Mondstadt, this is how you get the shrine keys. I'm gonna put it this side. I'm not gonna even I'm not gonna say it because you have eyes. For Liyue, unfortunately, I haven't made it past five keys. So these are the ones I know. And that pretty much brings me to the end of the video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Uh, I will have the total amount of facts, I think, as an indicator here. I'm excited to see how much I actually vomited. <laughs> but yeah, I've hit end game. Uh, there's not actually that much left to do. I'm just going around searching for books, searching for materials to finish off cooking. But oh God, I love this game so much. It's an incredible game and, and I can't believe that this is actually free. It's not sponsored by the way, but I still think the gacha system is absolute dog shit. It's dog shit. Actually, one last thing I almost forgot about. When you're at about AR31, you're going to be hard stuck because you don't have many quests to do or it's hard to get AI XP outside of doing chests. So what a lot of people are going to be doing is actually farming chests uh, along, I'll put, it, I'll put it on this side, the, this route, right? So chests are apparently respawnable. It's just that they're respawning. They're actually just respawning on random, which is kind of weird. But what this means is that collect all these chests while you can so that they actually have a chance of respawning. And last of all, just have fun with the game. There is so much to do and it's so much fun. Maybe I'll be back in a few days with another like 50 tips. I don't know, we'll see. But again, thank you for watching, blah, 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 blah. You already know what to do. Appreciate you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.